We're going to start this unit with center of mass. The center of mass is the average location of a mass distribution. For example, if this beater stick is perfectly uniform, the center of mass would be at the center, the 50 centimeter marking. Because the 50 centimeter marking is the average location of this mass distribution. I can balance this meter stick on my finger over here at the center of mass. Even though there is mass everywhere in the meter stick, in this case, we can treat the meter stick as if all its mass is concentrated right here at the center of mass. So I can provide the support at the center of mass and the balance the meter stick. If I add a piece of weight to the meter stick over here, the average location of this entire mass distribution would shift towards the heavier side off the center. And if I can balance the meter stick over here, that means the center of mass of this whole system is at this location. There's another term called the center of gravity. This meter stick has mass distributed everywhere, which means gravity pulls on bits of mass everywhere throughout the stick. And the center of gravity is the average location of the gravitational force. So where do you think the center of gravity of the meter stick is? If the meter stick is perfectly uniform, the center of gravity would be at the 50 centimeter marking. The center of gravity and the center of mass are virtually at the same location. Well, if I hold the meter stick this way, the difference between the two will be a little bit larger. Let's say this meter stick is uniform and the center of mass is at a 50 centimeter marking. Do you think the center of gravity is slightly above or slightly below the center of mass? Does gravity pull harder on the top half of the meter stick or does it pull harder on the bottom half? The bottom half. Because the bottom half is closer to the center of the Earth, therefore the center of gravity will be very slightly below the center of mass. Of course, for a meter stick, there's not much difference at all. It only makes a difference if we are considering something that is really, really tall. So in normal situations, we can treat the center of mass and the center of gravity as the same thing. Here I have a dolphin, I mean a cardboard dolphin. How can I find the location of center of mass for this piece of cardboard? I can try to balance it on my finger. So here it is. I put a marker at the center of mass. One important property of center of mass is that we can sometimes use the center of mass to represent the end object, pretending that all of the mass is concentrated at the center of mass. For example, if I throw this cardboard like a projectile, it would follow a parabolic trajectory. If there is no rotation involved, then every point on the dolphin would follow a parabola as it goes. However, if, you, if I throw it with a rotation, it would go through the air like this, which means the head of the dolphin is not going to trace a parabola, neither would its tail. In fact, only one point on the dolphin would follow a parabolic path, the center of mass. Let's give it a try. If you keep your eyes on the center of mass, you can see that it follows the parabolic path.
Now let's look at how we can find the location of center of mass for a two-object system. In AP Physics B, I don't think you have to deal with systems much more complex than this kind. Let's say you have two 2 kilogram objects 0.8 meters apart. Where is the center of mass of this two object system? In this case, we have symmetry, so the center of mass is simply right in the middle, 0.4 meters from each of the two kilograms. What if the two objects are 2 kilograms and 5 kilograms? Where is their center of mass? Their center of mass should be closer to the heavier one. And it turns out that if the mass is 2 to 5, the distance to the center of mass would be 5 to 2. So if I let the distance between the 2 kilogram and the center of mass be x, then the distance x to this will be 0.8 minus x. x to 0.8 minus x should equal to 5 to 2. And then we can cross multiply and solve for x. Or we can say, we can chop the total distance, 8.8 .8 meters, into 5 plus 2, 7 pieces. The distance here to here would be 5 out of the 7 pieces, which means uh, x would equal to a fraction of the 0.8 meters, and that fraction is 5 out of the 7 pieces. So 5 sevenths of the 0.8 meters, which gives us uh, 4 sevenths of a meter. Of course, if you use this method, you'll get exactly the same thing.